Ribs are a real common feature in most plastic products, but how do you actually design them and how can you design them so that you can produce those products with mass production printing to avoid the cost of molds and shipping and warehousing? So ribs are used all over the place, and the main reason has been is because they improve rigidity of a part. With traditional machining and injection molding, what they do is they remove material and make sure you don't have any thick walls that can cause shrinkage inside of a part. This isn't really relevant though to 3D printing, and actually ribs very often cause issues with 3D printing. If you're looking at a part like this, each one of these pockets might have to be supported based on how large it is, which means that you are increasing post-production. Somebody will have to come through and pluck out reams of support out of this part, whereas it could have come off the machine fully complete if you had designed it appropriately. So with ribs like this, what you always wanna do is try to eliminate the need for support. So like this center pocket right here, actually you can see starts sagging because those ribs are basically horizontal features that go out into thin air and have nothing underneath them. So you have to either build removable support or build in design support. And that is basically what these center cross beams are. They split the distance that a thing has to reach out into thin air so that it can actually make it before sagging starts setting in. So if you are designing ribs, please make sure to put in as many verticals as you possibly can. However, that's only a solution for ribs in general. Sometimes you can't put in those types of cross supports. If you have ribs, you have to realize that 3D printing actually allows you to make really thick features, features that were never possible with any other process before. So actually you can take the ribs and make them thicker, make them rounded, chamfer them so that they no longer have an overhang. So rather than having this horizontal shelf inside of there, you're actually able to put a slot underneath them and turn them into a triangle or a round rib or a pyramidal rib, which gives you much more rigidity and also does not really add material because these would actually be made hollow with 3D printing. But now you have a very thick, tough, strong part that is actually very easy to produce and doesn't have any need for support whatsoever. You can see these two ribs right up here, even though they are reaching the full distance, don't have any sag, but this bottom one that does not have that chamfer underneath it is sagging, which causes a very low quality looking product there. Now, of course, the very best option for ribs is to not have any at all. Again, printing can create solid, thick, chunky parts, which has never really been possible before without adding a lot of extra weight or a lot of extra material or being in danger of shrinkage. But since printing is able to additively add in layers and use infill so that you're not really adding a lot of material, you can create a solid, thick, chunky part. So rather than having a bunch of ribs in there creating rigidity with the same thickness piece, you can just fill it all in solid. So if you have a spot or an electrical enclosure that has a bunch of ribs and sprues and everything else, fill it in there and put in the holes. You don't need the ribs. The ribs are an artifact from a means of manufacturing that is not necessary anymore. You don't need to put in rigidity by adding in these little strengthening trusses and features. You can just have a solid block of stuff that has internal stresses within it that allow it to be really strong and really durable, but also make it very simple and improve the appearance of it quite a bit because now rather than having all this chicanery inside of there, you just have a nice smooth inner surface. But that's not always the case. Sometimes you actually need the ribs because they create pockets and space for whatever you might be inserting into the enclosure or the product or the toy. So if you do have to do ribs, what you wanna do is design them so that they are not gonna have any sort of support. The chamfer is kind of a brute force way of doing that, but it's an easy way with existing methodologies. If you started out with ribs like this, you put chamfers in there or you put sprues and spacers and supports inside of there, and that's an easy way of getting it done. But if you really want to design ribs for 3D printing, what you would do is you'd start thinking in diagonals and you'd end up with something like this. These diagonal ribs never have a horizontal overhang. So there's never an opportunity for them to sag. They grow up iteratively and stair step their way up with each new layer that's added onto this part. So you get the same features of the ribs and you get all the space that they can provide you, but you don't have to worry about overhangs or sagging or any of the rest of it. But there's also one step further that you can go. If you are stuck with these types of ribs that have to be perpendicular to each other and in this position on the enclosure, rather than printing the enclosure like this, you can actually take it and print it diagonally like this. That then allows you 
to grow this whole thing up diagonally so that none of these ribs are overhangs again. And this part actually becomes more manufacturable, but it requires changing the aesthetic of your part, which is something that we don't generally want to do because you end up requiring chamfers on the outside. So rather than printing on a flat side like this, which is what everybody wants to do, you have to give it kind of a faceted look, print it like this. And then you also have to make sure that the part is not so tall that it can fall over while printing, which means you might actually have to print it sideways like this, which might change your aesthetic because the bed material is a little bit different. It's just unhandy. So you don't really want to go down that route, but this is a really good way to very easily manufacture a part without having to redesign everything. But if you're at a white sheet and you're thinking about how you're going to design it, number one, remember that you don't need ribs. You can just make a thick, chunky part to make it strong. If you have an existing old part that you're just upgrading, add in chamfers wherever you can or fill in the gaps so that you can actually use the old design quickly and easily. Or you can just add in more spacers and sprues so that the ribs are not hanging out in free space, which just improves the quality of the part. And if you're in a situation where you absolutely have to have ribs, you cannot fill them in, you cannot chamfer them, and you're going from clean sheet to where you're designing this product, just make sure to design in diagonals. That way you don't have any overhangs, but you have all the same features features and quality that you need without having to worry about the process itself. Have a great day, everybody.